President Officer, if the Kelman Commission needed evidence of a government that showed so little interest in their existing powers and more interest in the powers that they do not have, then they need go no further uh, than this SNP government. They enjoy the trappings of power, President Officer, but they do so little when it comes to taking responsibility for government. And I've got to say that I think, Presiding Officer, that Patrick Harvey has done a disservice uh, to, the, to the links that we have uh, bonded with uh, Malawi. This Parliament has, closed, has bonded close links with Malawi. I welcomed uh, residents from Malawi to my constituency. Uh, and to say that we shouldn't uh, have debated uh, Malawi in the way that we did. We, excuse me, can I clarify uh, the point, uh, Presiding Officer? I did not say that we should not. The way in which we debated Malawi was ensuring that we used the powers that we had available to this Scottish Parliament to ensure that we took forward our effective relationship with Malawi. I'll let Mr Harvey come in on that point. Point of order, oh, excuse me, Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The, the member has quite clearly accused me of saying that we should not have debated Malawi in the way we did. I think the whole chamber knows, apart from Mr Martin, that I said no such thing. Would the member withdraw it? It's not a point of order, Mr Martin. Officer, can I make clear, well, can, can I clarify the point, if I'm allowed to make that point, uh, Presiding Officer, listen intently to what Mr Harvey says. Mr Harvey says that this Parliament debated Malawi. This Parliament debated Malawi in respect of the powers that we have available to us. We did not encroach on the powers that were available to Westminster. And I reiterate that point from Mr Harvey. Presiding Officer, the key point that we make in these benches is that the National Identity Scheme will allow people to prove their identity more seriously. Mr Rumble's presiding officer. It will be harder for their identity to be stolen or misused because it will be protected by biometrics and the scheme can, we believe, uh, prevent criminals from, from using false or multiple identities. We have said that on a number of occasions, presiding officer. There is a serious point which every member of the opposition parties have ignored, presiding officer. And that is that identification fraud is a problem. Everyone has ignored that. A problem that has been ignored by this government. A problem that cost the public, on the latest estimates, over £1.7 billion per year, presiding officer. Presiding officer, we also need to ensure, I'll bring in later uh, Mr Brown, we need to recognise that we have a responsibility to provide extra protection to those high profile targets that terrorists have targeted in the past, and particularly airports. I was delighted to note that the Home Secretary, Jackie Smith, showed real leadership, leadership and has brought forward new measures using identity cards for baggage handlers, check-in staff, aircraft handlers and immigration staff and customs officials. I'll bring Mr Brown in. Robert Brown. Thank you very much. I was just going to ask whether Paul Martin could quote any evidence from countries which did have ID cards as to whether their levels of identity fraud were any different. There may be some information, there may not be. I don't know. Does he know? Mr Martin. Mr. Officer, can, can I make the point? That the debating points that we make here on a number of occasions are examples in other countries. President Officer, I did not expect uh, in this country that we live in for it to be the terrorist attack that took place in June last year. And I'm afraid that we had to react to that particular incident. That's not something that I expected to happen in this country. Presiding Officer, we believe in these benches that such actions will deliver a strengthened identity yeah. assurance regime, making pre-employment checks and security checks much easier for those airside workers. And we believe that this is the way forward, presiding officer. Presiding officer, another example of where identity cards can be a success. You cannot ignore the fact that there are employers out there in our communities who would willingly employ illegal workers and pay them well under the rate of the minimum wage. A fact, uh, presiding officer. This is not, and not only does this have a real negative impact in the local economy, but it is also unfair, grossly unfair, to those employees and employers who go about their business in a legitimate manner. The introduction of ID cards provides an opportunity to use the technology that is available to prevent such practices taking place and leave the unscrupulous employer in no doubt that their activities will be detected and possibly prevented. Presiding officer, a number of members have been extremely exercised in respect of the information that will be held on these ID cards. And I note that Mr Rumbles is concerned that we would hold a picture of him on this ID card. It's not often that politicians don't want their pictures taken, presiding officer. I don't remember Mr Rumbles in the past being concerned about pictures being taken either in this chamber or outside this chamber. I'm sure we'll see a number of press releases on Mr Rumbles' website where photographs have been taken uh, of him. Presiding officer, there is no more information 
And this personal, I, I'll, I'll bring Mr. Rumbles in. Mike Rumbles. He doesn't realize how shy I am, but I never produce photographs on press releases. <laughs> Sir Martin. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll check that for accuracy later, President <laughs> Officer. Uh, President Officer, there is no more. The only information that's not provided in my photo uh, uh, driving license, which I'm sure a number of members possess uh, in this chamber, the only additional information that will be provided is two fingerprints which will be encrypted uh, within that very information. So I, proceed, I say to every member in this chamber, there is not much difference from this card and many of the other cards that members are in possession of uh, today, President Officer. President Officer, the issue of public support has been raised on a number of occasions by many members. President Officer, independently conducted polls consistently show strong support, uh, and I'll, I'll take on Mr Brown's point later, that research that shows, and recent research shows that 59% of, uh, of the British public uh, support the principle of ID cards. And I accept uh, that public opinion, and I take on board, uh, presenting officer, the point that Robert Brown has made, that public opinion has, re has reduced as a result of the loss uh, of data throughout that period. I accept that point, presenting officer. But I am clear that those agencies who are responsible need, for, for the holding of such data need to show greater care when they are handling and holding data. But, presenting officer, I do not think Mr uh, Ewing uh, responded to the point that I raised earlier with him in respect of information that has been lost by the Scottish Government uh, over the last 18 months. An uncontested uh, uh, press release released by Richard Simpson confirms that Nicola Sturgeon has presided over the largest loss of confidential files in Scottish history. Over one million confidential files have been lost by this Scottish Government to date, presiding officer, the piece of information that Mr Ewing was unable to provide this chamber with earlier, presiding officer. So I will not take lectures from this Government. And in fact, can I just confirm for the benefit of Christine Graham, because in relation to the NHS files that were lost, she says the situation was extremely alarming. Uh, presenting officer, so I'm sure she's also alarmed that her Scottish Government has lost over one million uh, confidential files. Presenting officer, in conclusion, I say once again, I protest at the way this Government treats this chamber like a debating society. When our prisons are bulging, our councils face massive cuts, and when our communities are living in fear, it would fit them better to debate the issues that really face our communities throughout Scotland, instead of looking at every possible opportunity to pick a fight with Westminster. We oppose all of the motions in the names of the opposition parties. I now call on Fergus Ewing to wind up. Minister, you have eight minutes. Um, presiding officer, I, I think that this has been an interesting debate. I'm not sure if you can call it a constructive debate at all times. It's certainly been 